April 1st, 2024, the Detroit Tigers are playing the New York Mets at Citi Field. Javier Baez, the Tigers shortstop, gets booed in his first at-bat of the game. This was a little unexpected, at least to me. See, this was Baez's first at-bat at Citi Field since playing for the Mets. While it wasn't for very long, Javier Baez's Mets tenure was the very best of his career, a career in which he once finished second place in MVP award voting, but yet, they're booing him. Javier Baez, the New York Met, will go down as a complicated blip in baseball history. One thing's for sure though, when he was going good, he played like he was the baddest man alive. Baez gets one in the air yeah. the field, Winker going back, looking up! Baez has played his whole career with flair and energy, but two things he's never had long term are consistency and a fully polished skill set. Sure, he hits home runs and plays incredible infield defense, but his apparent love for striking out and hatred for walking makes his rough stretches really really rough. For the most part, as a Chicago Cub, he remained a strong net positive, with there being equally as much volatility in his personality as his play. Baez plays baseball like he has a screw loose, which to many makes him a polarizing player. He chirps. He's emotional. He does increasingly inventive and unique brilliant things that somehow work to his advantage. But once the wheels fell off for his Cubs team in 2021, he was traded in an attempt to give a late season spark to a Mets team falling out of contention. Especially because he was going to become a free agent available to go to any team once the season ended. Baez was brought in to be a double play partner with his childhood friend and Mets superstar shortstop Francisco Lindor. At least when Lindor was coming back off the injured list pretty soon. Which meant one of the best defensive shortstops in baseball was going to have to shift to second base. And that worked out wonderfully. Run by his the pack, the catch, what a play! Baez after what a mile on a ball that did not happen. Baez will always pull his weight defensively. That's basically been a given for every single team he's ever played for. Even playing a position he hadn't regularly played in three years, he was a lock to give you that. Despite that, the Mets around him, once the team got Baez, completely slipped. They were 9-20 and 20 in their first 29 games since acquiring Baez at the trade deadline. And the impression given to fans was that he was in the same old bad habits as the team crumbled around him. However, this situation was going to go absolutely nuclear, starting with a Sunday afternoon game at the end of August against the Washington Nationals. Baez Rockets run, forget that! That is way, way out! Into the second deck, Javi Baez puts a charge into one, and the Mets go in front 3-2. Did you catch that? Baez celebrated his home run by throwing two thumbs down gestures at the crowd of Mets fans. Which is... bizarre. Don't see that every day. What you have probably never seen before, ever, is how he explained his reasoning for doing this. What does the thumbs down celebration after a big hit mean? This is the booze that we get. You know, we like we're gonna do the same thing to to know how to to let them know how how it feels. What? Booing back at the fans for booing the team. So let's get this straight: the team is not playing well. Neither is Baez. And during a moment of him being on top, he felt the need to exact his revenge. Lindor did this too, but Baez is much more remembered and associated with it. We're not, we're not machines. We're gonna struggle, you know. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna struggle seven times out of out, out of ten, and and you know, it just, it just feels bad when, when, when we strike out. When I strike out and I get booed, you know, it doesn't really get to me. But like, I want, I want to let them know that when we success, we're gonna do the same thing to, to know how, to, to let them know how, how it feels, you know. In my case, they, they gotta be better. Like, he's right until he stops talking about the seven out of ten times cliche. 
you don't wage war against your new team's fan base when times are tough to begin with. The Mets fans and the Mets organization immediately condemned these comments. The fans did it as clearly as they possibly could, doing the one thing Baez expressed his discontent for. I'll show you that in just a second. The brass of the team publicly expressed disapproval for these comments too. Enjoy the glory of Sandy Alderson and his powers of apathy. No, Tree. He actually had an opinion here. As did team owner Steve Cohen. For a brief period, Javier Baez was the biggest villain around the New York Mets fanbase and he was a current player on the team. So for the next two days, Baez was public enemy number one in Queens. But then, the perfect, most storybook circumstances possible spawned in about 48 hours later. The completion of a suspended game from four and a half months before, when Baez was a cub who batted lefty against the Mets to troll them around this time. As this makeup game went along, Baez rode the bench which was only one small step above not even being on the team when the game initially began in April. Then, Baez did come to pinch hit for his first at-bat since all this started. And now here's Baez. He wore a pitch in this at-bat. A pretty ironic occurrence in the wake of all this going on. The fans, in a sick way, got what they wanted in a sense. Payback, in some capacity. As awful as that might be to say. But one inning later, things were getting real. Miraculously, Javier Baez was coming up as the winning run in this game. The beef had to be killed. Now. He singled. Good for him. Better for him was what would happen one batter later. And Conforto slashes one the other way, base hit! That ties the game! Baez digging for third, here comes Baez! Try to score! He scores! Turn those thumbs around! Javi Baez races home with a winning run, and the Mets win it 6-5! to five. What a win. What a call. What a moment. Javi Baez scored the winning run in an incredible ninth inning comeback at home in front of the crowd he went to war with at his first game back in the wake of the fallout from that controversy, taking shots at the very crowd he was finally embracing, and the other way around as well. Now what if I told you the craziest part of this story has yet to be shared? Baez lost one of his earrings coming around to score this run. The Mets looked for it, he looked for it, the team president who scorned his comments from before looked for it, it was never found. During Baez's return to City Field in 2024 as a Tiger, they made sure to remind everyone. I hear you guys responding to this story from behind your screen. It's just an object. Everything's fine. How much was the Baez earring worth? Let's see here. Okay, I lied. You want to know what's really the craziest thing about this incident? From the time Baez stepped back on the field after this controversy exploded, he was amazing. September of 2021 was easily his best month of the season and showed us a Baez we were not seeing before, like ever. He drew 13 walks in 47 games as a Met at the end of 2021, which might not sound like a lot, but he walked 15 times in 91 games with the Cubs before that, and 7 times with them in 59 games in 2020. His OPS+, plus, which is a stat that tries to reduce all hitting down to one common number, was the best of his career. Sample size, I know, but it does go to show how good he was with the Mets. He hit nearly 300 as a Met which if you could see the player Baez has been since leaving the Mets, you would probably think it's impossible. He did it with power too, and still staying clutch. And Baez drives one deep left field toward the wall, and O'Neal jumps, he can't get it. It's a home run to tie the game. It became a viciously good and dangerous cycle. Better plate discipline prolonged his at-bats and the chance at seeing good pitches. He smoked those pitches, and made it super aesthetically pleasing when he did. For the first time, maybe in his whole life, 
he was showing that he could finally do it all at the major league level. Not being able to draw a walk if the fate of the universe depended on it was always his undoing, even if he already had the power, speed, and defense. But the newfound discipline in New York to pick his spots more carefully to crush balls on, that was the missing piece. That's what allowed him to seem like he was having the most stone-cold yet electric energy of his career on a game-per-game -game basis. Because he probably was. I'm sure that fresh environment, coupled with having one of his best friends there, made for an added level of comfortability with the Mets too. And he still did show that when he made contact, he was connecting big time. His hard hit and barrel rate numbers were still really good in 2021. Today, there's nothing he's shown he's special at to start 2024. <laughs> it sucks, man. Because while Baez gave that taste of being a complete player as a Met, it wound up just being a taste. The Mets were tied to him the whole beginning of the offseason, with some criticizing the mere thought of letting him go. I mean, the circumstances showed themselves to be good. A new environment helped him, playing alongside one of his best friends who was signed to be in New York for the next decade. However, many pointed out that the potential mirage of his newfound package was very much there. One writer for the New York Post made sure to point out that Baez, for like five and a half years worth of time in the majors, was still the kind of player you'd be equally likely to want to extend or cut at a moment's notice, and one two-month period as a Met wasn't gonna change that. Put it this way, even with his Met stretch having the best walk rate of his career, that wasn't enough to help save his walk-to-strikeout ratio from being the worst in Major League Baseball. Here's the other, slightly more sentimental argument for the Mets letting Baez leave. From the time the Mets traded for Baez to the day the season mercifully ended, their record was 22-38. and 38. Baez was the face of this terrible stretch of time the Mets were in. And he never truly got over the thumbs down saga, even when playing the best ball of his career. It really goes to show how important a first impression really is. So when the Detroit Tigers inked Baez to a six year deal, plenty of Mets fans were okay with the thought of someone else being on the hook for six unpredictable years of his career. And unfortunately for everyone, Baez has never been the same. 2022 was below average, 2023 was terrible, and he's opened 2024 downright brutally. This is the Javi Baez experience. You truly have no idea what you're gonna get with him, but when he's not walking, the floor completely bottoms out. He is simply just not the same player with the Tigers as he was with the Mets. Like, he put up more war in his less than 50 games as a Met than he did in the entirety of 2023. The flaws are still there, sure. He'll get memed for having ugly looking swings and misses for both teams. He was benched in 2023 with the Tigers for forgetting how many outs there were when he was running the bases. And Baez doesn't know how many outs there are. Another mistake by Javier Baez. Like it or not, baseball is better if someone like Javi Baez is better. He does play with an extreme amount of passion. He loves baseball, he's very genuine about that. Just because his low points can be incredibly frustrating doesn't mean they're fun to watch. You feel for the guy when someone whose successes are amazing to watch look to be further and fewer in between. It's especially sad to see him admit that these struggles are messing with his head and that his focus is struggling because of it. Because he did prove with the Mets that that consistent player is somewhere in there. He just has to figure out how to find it again. Without one of his best friends to bounce off of, with few expectations placed on the team around him, and with a whole lot of losing being done in Detroit, Baez has faded off the radar and the spotlight for baseball fans. Playing with aura and a slight degree of, like, kamikaze-ness at all times works when you're producing, but when you're lacking the on-field accomplishments to celebrate, that quickly goes away. Baez may never be a productive hitter ever again, and his time in Detroit is on pace to be remembered as a colossal bust. But if that's the case, and he becomes romanticized for his Cubs tenure to future generations, 
Never forget that the best stretch of his career was with a totally different team that got the full taste in the shortest amount of time.